a lovely morning and I would like to welcome you back to Sonnet Institute of Technology. My name is Bruce Malauti and I'm super excited to be your instructor for the hands-on pen testing course. This is module 1.6 of the video course. In this demonstration, I will show you how to add Linux appliances in GNS3. Linux is freely available on the internet and you do not need special licensing to download it. As a matter of fact, um, a full guide has been demonstrated on the video, uh, module 1.2, adding checkpoint appliance to GNS3. So if you need a full guide, please go back to this video and you can come back to this one. In this particular demonstration, I will be using the following hosts. First of all, I'll be using Kali Linux. This is our attacking machine. I recommend using Kali Linux. If you do not have access to Kali Linux, you are welcome to use it to use any of these machines of these uh, Linux uh, variants. The first one is Kane, which means computer aided in investigation environment. The second one is Backtrack, which is no longer officially uh, supported. Backtrack was replaced by Kali Linux. The third one is Backbox. The next one is Deft. And we also have Fire. And finally, Pinto Linux. These are just some of the Linux tools which you can use. There are lots of them available on the internet. The second uh, host which I'll be demonstrating with is the CentOS machine which is optional and I'll also use a headed enterprise Linux and finally I'll be using the Zental server. Zental is a, uh, it's a, it's a server which you can use uh, in alternate to Windows server. Zental server is based on Ubuntu uh, 14 and I did try using try using a Zental server 5.0, but it didn't work in GNS3. So if you want to add Zental server, I recommend using uh, 4.1. Uh, Zental server has got a lot of roles such as DHCP, DNS services, uh, mail services, printing services, uh, LDAP services. So if you do not have uh, access to Windows Server 2008 or 2012, I recommend trying out the Zental Server. Without wasting time, let's get to GNS3. Here on GNS3, I've got the appliances here. So let me start adding them. So I've got a CentOS. Uh, scroll down. A Kali box. A Red Dead Server. Uh, scroll down I have a Zental server in between I can add a switch and I'd like to add a router as well that will act as a DHCP server and let me interconnect these devices to the switch Once I'm done, I would like to use the 172 network. That would be 172.16.1.0 and slash 24. So that's my subnet there. So I will start configuring the router uh, which will act as my DHCP server. So I will switch it on. OK, 
Okay, the router is booted, so I can start configuring. Uh, this is a Cisco router, so the commands are ConfT to get into global configuration mode, and the next command will be IP DH DHCP pool, and I like to call my pool as my pool. The network is 172.16.1. .1. Zero on the 24 subnet, and the default route is 172. Uh, .16 .1 254 and I can exit from there and select my interface that is Ethernet 00. zero. IP address is 172.16.1.254. Um, this is the IP address which I need to assign to assign to the router on interface Ethernet zero slash zero. So that will be 172.16.1.254 on the dot four subnet. I need to bring up the interface. That will be no shut command. Uh, I can exit and save. If I do the show IP interface brief, so my interface is up and my IP is sorted out as well. So I can exit from here. So I'll bring these devices one by one. So I'll start with a CentOS machine. Right click. Uh, before I start the CentOS machine, I need to bring up the switch first. So bring up the switch. Now I can bring up the CentOS machine. CentOS machine. I log on as root. And if I do cat etc. Rated release. You can see that I'm using a CentOS. 7.1 so let me check my IP address and it has been assigned a dot one address from the DHCP so it's working perfectly and I can exit from here let me bring up the Kali box Kali box is booting So let me log on to the Kali box as root. Okay, let me start the terminal shell. And let me see what IP address has been assigned. So this one has been assigned a dot two address. That's one seven two dot sixteen dot one dot two. So from this moment, I can ping the CentOS machine. That will be ping send four packets one seven two dot sixteen dot one dot one. Yes, I can ping. So at this point of time, I can do a quick nmap as well. Uh, nmap one seven two dot sixteen. Dot one, dot one. Okay, and map is done. So what I have here, port twenty two is open, and it's SSH. So that is true, the CentOS machine is SSH configured and I can SSH right now as well. So that will be SSH uh, root at the IP address of the CentOS machine that will be 172.16.1.1. Yes. Uh, 
Okay, so I am connected to the CentOS machine and if I do the IP address, you can see that belongs to the CentOS machine. If I do uh, get etc rated release, as you can see, it belongs to the CentOS machine. Okay, so as from now, I can exit here and go to the next one. So I've demonstrated on the CentOS machine on the Kali box and I've also uh, checked for open ports on the CentOS machine. We found out that port 22 is open and SSH is using port 22. So we tried to SSH into that, although I knew the credentials, but I wanted to show you that um, NMAP showed the right results. So without wasting time, let me get to the switch on the Zentel server and show you how it looks like inside. Okay, Zentel server is booting. So just wait until it boots. So let me log on to the Zentel server. I'll log in as Bruce. Enter my password. Okay, I am logged in. And so as the web GUI starts, you can enter your username here and your password here. Click enter. And then you are logged on to the dashboard. So the dashboard show you um, takes you to the configurations. So you have your network configuration here, your interfaces, and I can set one and say DHCP. So it will get a DHCP um, network uh, configuration. Then I can scroll down and see which modules are running as well. So once I click uh, save changes, the changes will be saved. As you can see, it's, uh, it's saving the changes here. Yeah. Just have to wait till it finish. Once the changes have been saved, you can exit from here. Before I exit, I'd like to show you a bit of the modules which this server can do. Uh, you have your Active Directory here. Yeah? You have your domain. Uh, it, your file sharing, that is Samba and NFS. You have your mail services, your DNS, your DHCP, you have your firewall here, and a certificate authority, VPN, printers. So this server can do much and you can actually use this server instead of your Windows 2008 or Windows Server 2012. So I can minimize this window and start the console enter the root password and I can check what IP has been assigned to this machine since we are using DHCP so this machine has been assigned a dot three address so the IP address is 172.16.1.3 so I can minimize that and minimize that window I can go back to the Kali box and Login back and map uh, the IP address of the Zentel uh, server. So that will be 172.16.1.3. So this is a quick end map port scanning and it won't take a while. It scans for common ports. Okay, uh, port scanning is done. So let's see what we have here. So the Zental server has SSH open. Um, we have port 53. 
open that is uh, DNS services we also have port 389 so LDAP is configured we have what else do we have here scroll down it's quite a lot of services as I showed you there are a lot of lots of modules running on this server as you can see um, I have DNS running file sharing email DNS um, DHCP firewall VPN therefore if I would like to SSH into Central server I can do it that is SSH Bruce at the IP address of the Central server and type in yes and my password so I am logged in at the Central server so um, there's no need for me to switch on that Reddit uh, server um, so far I've demonstrated you by using the CentOS machine uh, the Kali box here and the Zental server so we did a quick port scanning on the CentOS machine we found that only port 22 is open so that is SSH so I logged in uh, to the CentOS machine because I know my credentials I also switched on the Zental server we logged in and we checked which services are running and then we also did a quick port scanning as well we found that a lot of ports are open because the server is running a lot of services so in the next uh, module that will be module 2 I will show you how to use nmap in scanning the network and then once you find your target you do port scanning and try to um, to find out which ports or services are vulnerable so i'd like to thank you for watching and i hope this has been informative to you goodbye for now